Coming to you live from West Kensington, London. This is the Next Gen Profits podcast, and we're your spiritual parents, Craig and Colette Toch. We're recording on location here in this tiny little Airbnb. You know the pictures; <laughs> they lie. Mm -hmm. It looked like such a big, spacious place, but it turns out that all the the homes here, all the apartments here, are super, super tiny. So we we're having a nice, very intimate podcast here um, as we accelerate your prophetic process. <laughs> Well, at least it's quaint. Like it they is use. quaint. It is really, really <laughs> quaint. We're thoroughly enjoying our stay. We got to see all the sites yesterday. Yes. I posted some of the pictures to Facebook. You know, it's crazy. I, I realized, Craig, just that we haven't really taken many family days. No. Um, the last couple of months. The Lord has had us just pouring out, and we love it. We mm -hmm. do. We always took our kids everywhere with us, and even Michael, he's come with us on all our ministry trips this year. But to just have a day or two of family day, mm -hmm. I realized, wow, we haven't really spent nearly enough time. And no. I really feel like this was such a gift from it the was. Lord. Yep. And we, we had a lot of fun yesterday. Uh, we did all the, the sites, you know, the Tower <laughs> Bridge, the Tower of London and mm -hmm. uh, the River Thames. So we're, we're feeling really, really blessed. And I think it's such a perfect illustration to begin today's podcast on. And mm -hmm. that is the Practice His Presence Project. Oh, yes. Because the Lord is trying to set you up to have a relationship with you, mm. but you're so busy on your track that you don't recognize those moments. Yes. And today we're going to give you a project that's going to help you recognize those moments and going to be the catalyst. And I want to mm. use this word so specifically, the catalyst for supernatural strength. Mm. You see, I didn't know that I needed the family day. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I needed to step away for a little bit to hear the voice of the Lord in a different way. Yes. And that's what we're here to impart to you today. Mm -hmm. Because you're so caught up in your environment and what's going on and your process mm -hmm. and the people coming against you, the pressures coming against you, you are lacking mm -hmm. an element, a powerful element mm -hmm. that's going to change everything with you. And mm -hmm. that element, prophet, is practicing his presence mm, every so moment good. of the day. Mm. Now, before we jump into it, I want to give a shout out to our tribe. Um, you're here with us. In fact, oh, yesterday, yes. Craig and I, we went and got some souvenirs for some of those in our tribe, especially those that have been with us for quite some time. You can expect expect to get a, a card and a gift in the mail because you're with us. Yes. You, you're here with us accelerating this prophetic move, mm -hmm. finding the next gen prophets. And if you'd like to become part of that movement, myprophetictribe.com. We've got tribe joining us every single day now. Yes. And I'm mm -hmm. my favorite thing to do in the morning is to load our communities app and to go and see everybody who's joined to get to know them and read their names. Myprophetictribe.com. Become a part of what Craig and I are doing and the next gen prophets are doing in the prophetic move. Now, here's your scripture. This is the secret key. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 to 20. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ mm. at his coming? Mm. You in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ mm. is the best, best version of you, prophet. That's right. But you know what the problem is? You don't always feel <laughs> like you're in the presence of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. You see, I thought that I have to be out there ministering and pouring out to really feel the power and anointing. Mm. But would it surprise you to know that I was feeling it while walking over the Tower Bridge, over the River Thames, with my husband on one side and my son on the other and Jesus with these arms around us, mm that this right here was a moment mm. in his presence mm. and how we should interact mm. with Jesus all the time. Mm. You know, I love this mindset we're changing today because even for myself, you know, I always thought Jesus, I mean, we, we think of Jesus as everywhere. I mean, he's yeah. omnipresent. So yes, of course, but too often we only relate it when we feel the anointing. Mm -hmm. So he's only in the service. He's only on that one song that, that, inspires our emotions and we feel that goosebumps down our <laughs> down our back or you know in the meeting where the lord really uses the the, the preacher or the the sermon to to touch touch something inside of us but you know i love what you're saying it's he's with us all the time and you know in the spirit as we speak i see how like we walk through the day and we get dirty yeah but it's not the dirt that 
takes away his presence. It's just around us. But inside of us, Jesus is there all the time. Yeah. And if we can just realize that our emotions are not the the yardstick to oh, feeling the good. anointing. Amen. You know, if you don't feel holy, if you don't feel it, it doesn't matter. Jesus is with you and you can tap into that moment with him like we were on the bridge. You know, our feet were sore because we'd been walking. So I, sore. You know, I need to check my step counter because, my goodness, my calves <laughs> today were saying, hey, you know what? You overdid it a little bit. But, you know, I enjoyed every moment because it wasn't my sore feet. It was standing with my family, sharing a moment that we will never share again. Mm. And that's why when we're doing the presence of Jesus, you sharing a moment with him. There might be nobody else around, but you're sharing a moment that will never be repeated again. And you can really experience something beautiful At in that home. moment. You know what I love about the Practicing His Presence Project? And hang in there, guys. I have five steps for you. You know the steps are coming. Mm -hmm. If you've listened to our podcast before, you know I cannot end this podcast <laughs> without giving you the five steps. If this is the first time you're listening, get used to step one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. It's my happy place. I can't end a podcast without <laughs> giving you something practical to apply today. So I'm going to give you those steps, but don't... Make the mistake, like Craig said, of assuming that your emotions are the truth. Mm -hmm. Especially as prophets, we yep. gauge a lot of our revelation through our emotions that we can get a little bit too dependent on them. Mm -hmm. But yet it's the times that I felt most unanointed that I was the most effective. Yes. I remember there was uh, this time where I'd, I'd really been going through a tough time, a lot of pressure situations. I was discouraged and we had a big meeting and I had to stand up and preach and be all powerfully anointed. And I was in travail. I was in the presence of the Lord before the meeting on my face before him. And I was crying out. I was saying, Lord, I don't feel very anointed. I feel broken. I feel hurt. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much on my mind. There's this weight on me. He said, since when is my anointing dependent on how you feel? Mm. He said, Colette, the anointing goes with you. You're just a vessel. Yes. You're an alabaster box. <laughs> the perfume is in the alabaster box, whether yeah. the alabaster box feels perfumed or not. He said, you know, <laughs> when so somebody good. who's demonized yeah. walks into the room, you feel their demons, whether mm. they mean to show up their demons or not. Mm. And he said, so if that, if that's true, he said, how come you, as my alabaster box, cannot perfume the room oh. just because you're an alabaster box? You mm. don't have to feel perfumed. You just need to be. And I need you to mm. stand and to be Amen. in my presence regardless of how you Amen. feel. And it was one of my most anointed services. So everybody else tells me because they felt the power. I didn't need to feel the power. Mm. And prophet, you don't need to feel the power today. <laughs> you just need to know that you mm. carry the power. So we're going to do something fun this week. And I especially want you to do this project during your day, not just mm. in your times of worship, because Amen. it's obvious then. Yeah. No, while you're driving to work, while you're walking through the store, while you're grabbing those last minute groceries, I want you to do these five things. Okay. Follow with me here. Number one, imagine Jesus with you every moment of mm. that day. So yes, he's there picking out the best vegetables for dinner. He's there with you, helping you pick out that pair of shoes that you needed to get or figure out that <laughs> bill and how you're going to pay it. I want you to imagine he's sitting next to you on Amen. a bus. He's sitting next to you in your car. He's walking next to you so in good. the street. Just yep. by envisioning him there with yes. you changes everything. It does. it does. You know, I remember the days where I was... Uh, I was in the computer industry and I used to go and get all the components for the computers. You know, I spent a lot of time in the car and, you know, you're sitting there and you're thinking, Lord, if I have to sit in another traffic jam <laughs> and not be in the office or at home with my children, you know, or with my wife, it's like I could be doing so much more. But, you know, I ventured him sitting next to me and it turned around the whole moment. I actually enjoyed my time and my relationship with him got stronger. I connected with Jesus mm. and it made the whole experience something enjoyable. And every time I got into that situation, it triggered Ooh, that's Jesus good. next to me. I didn't have to think about it. I started off having to think about it. But every time I got into that situation, I started to feel those negative feelings. Jesus would step in and like tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, why don't we spend a little bit of time together? Oh. We've, we've got enough time. 
Oh, I love that so much. I, I love what you said about you recreating those templates mm. because there's certain situations where it brings out the worst emotion in us, yes. right? But instead, we're going to put the anointing there, which brings me to my second point. Engage in casual conversation. Oh, yes. You know, we are programmed with so much churches and Ooh. prairies and intercession notes that we forget to just have a real down-to-earth convo with the Lord. So, hey, Lord. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this traffic? I'm going crazy here, sitting here. I'm mm -hmm. bored. Mm -hmm. I don't know what. I mean, just talk to him like it would be your spouse or your best friend. Yes. This is great. Like you said, Craig, when yeah. you're sitting in the car yeah. for hours at a time, yeah. just have a conversation. If there's a lot of people around you, then you can have the conversation with your inside voice in your head. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, people think you're weird. But it does lead me to my third point, which is, once you've learned to open your mouth, and I really recommend you saying it out mm -hmm. loud if you can, because it helps with your connection yep. and it also changes your emotions dramatically. Yes. Three, vent. <laughs> Oh, yes. Get real with him. Yeah. You know, what I loved about um, meeting Craig for the first time is he was one of the few who really listened to the words that came from my heart. Mm -hmm. I could really express my frustrations to him and he listened. Yes. And it brought such a connection between the two of us. I said, wow, I found somebody that will be through with me. Yes. No matter what I go through, he'll go through with me. Mm -hmm. And Jesus will always go through with you. It just doesn't always feel that way. And it's mm -hmm. not his fault. It's yours. It's true. You you vent to a best friend. You you don't vent to Jesus. No. no. You know what I love about this, Colette, is that so often we don't want to vent because we don't want to put the person down and or we can't trust anybody around us because it's going to get out. Mm -hmm. You know, but Jesus is not going to tell. <laughs> it's okay. Jesus is going to listen and then he's going to give you steps to follow. And I love that because so often... You know, you can just vent. I love what you said. Just say anything. You know, that, that boss is driving me up the wall because he's such a control freak and he won't <laughs> let me do this. And, he, you know, I'm trying my best and I just seem, seem to not get the cut right for him. And, you know, the Lord will say something like, you know, my son, just chill. Mm -hmm. You know, just allow me to give you wisdom in the moment. So you know, little things like that. And I found that that was the difference between a, a good day and a bad day. Oh, Come on, let's turn those bad days into good <laughs> days. But I also find with venting is that we feel we're sinning. It took me yes. a very long time mm. to learn to vent to the Lord because yes. I grew up in a Christian home as a PK. So it was like... Um, you had to be righteous and holy, you know, you don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. And so I thought, man, if I really shared the ugly, um, what I really thought yep, with yep, the Lord, yep, that yep. he would smite me or something. <laughs> and it took me a while to recognize that that relationship with Lord Jesus required honesty from my part. Because then I put all my cards on the table. I laid myself bare before him. It's when you yeah, allow yeah. someone to see you're ugly, right? Yes. That you really start a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And so Vince, and... Point number four, as you're doing that and as you're connecting with Jesus, I want you to become of aware of the shift in your emotions yes. because you didn't realize how much baggage you've been carrying yes. until you started that venting with the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. But don't, don't just have every session with him a venting one. <laughs> that, that's five <laughs> steps, guys. That's yeah, only yeah. step number yeah, three, yeah. okay? You got to move to step number four and five. And that is become aware of the shift in your emotions. Yes. You may have been bored. You may have been frustrated. You may have been discouraged. And as you talk to him, it shifts. Why? Mm. You're connecting. And when you make that heavenly connected connection with the heart of Jesus Christ, you begin feeling what he feels. You begin thinking what he thinks, mm -hmm. which means you're ready and you're positioned for the final step, which is... Listen for his words mm. and then speak them out. So yes. we, we just start off. With number one, let me just imagine Jesus is there. Good. Perhaps that's all you do today. Let's just imagine Lord Jesus is there with me mm. everywhere I go. He's holding my hand Amen. as I'm walking along this road. He's got his arm around my shoulders as I'm at dinner with my family. And then number two, I'm going to start engaging him in casual conversation. So how do I look in this dress? Do these pants make me look big? You know, <laughs> just get real with him. Hey, mm. don't think I haven't asked Jesus stuff like that. He's he's more honest than my husband. Let me just put it that way. That's number true. three, That's true. <laughs> vent. Express your frustrations and innermost thoughts. This is where real relationship happens mm. with Jesus. And then number four, become aware of the shift in your emotions. Something mm. is stirring in you. The Lord is beginning to give you his emotion, which leads perfectly to step number five. Listen for his words now 
You may get them in visions, mm -hmm. you may get them in impressions. And then most importantly, once you hear him, speak it out. Because this is where Jesus gets to have yes, his right. say. You've mm -hmm. had engaged in casual conversation. Yes. You've vented, you've shared your side of the conversation. Don't end this process mm -hmm. today That's without good. hearing his side of the conversation. Because when that happens, mm -hmm. You've made connection. That's true. And that's when you will feel his presence. That's that true. is when your breakthrough yes. is on the way. Yes. And that is when you begin decreeing into your life and mm, seeing real so good. change. That's so good because, you know, so often I, I went into the vent and repent session and I was so angry. But actually to when Jesus kicked in, compassion kicked in. Ooh. And then compassion led to me speaking words for the other person and for their victory and for their breakthrough. And right away, the healing came. And that's what the Lord wants. He wants us to go through this so that we can be healed. We can get to closer relationship with him. And because of that, your relationships with everybody else gets closer too. Guys, we're here for you every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. For the next couple of weeks, we will be all over Europe. We promise to take you with us. We'll tell mm -hmm. you stories. We'll give a couple of shout outs. Those who are in our tribe, well, they get all the pictures and the behind the scenes, myprophetictribe.com. Come and join this prophetic movement as we go out there to find and accelerate those next gen prophets. We love you and we'll see you again tomorrow. Tally ho, let's go. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>